So, our indie lab, we made a cannon, and we used this ball, a Franklin ABS Pro. It's a street hockey ball. It caused us a large error because there's a liquid inside, as you can feel. <laughs> it's, there's pellets floating around in the liquid to keep it from bouncing. And that ball has is meant to be played with at a certain temperature. I don't remember what. The different colors mean different temperatures. So the purpose of our experiment was to make a air pressure cannon that basically where we sucked out all the pressure inside of it. And so when we poke the hole in the bottom, it shoots out of the top. And we did, we did use that in order to see if the pressure we sucked out of it and it ended up, the pressure we sucked out of it and then added with the uh, atmospheric pressure when we poked the hole in the bottom because air rushing in. If that combined pressure affected how far the projectile, tra the object travels as it shoots out the cannon. For our objects, we were originally doing potatoes and oranges but the potatoes and oranges were too massive. And we tried a tennis ball, but that was not massive enough. And then the squishy ball we tried was not massive, and it got stuck underneath the screw when we sucked the air out of it. And so we ended up spending an entire day finding a right ball. And still, that ball we had was not good enough. But it flew, unlike the potatoes and the oranges. So this is our setup. This is our cannon. It's a PVC pipe with duct tape, uh, an emergency blanket. We have a box underneath it to prevent the mylar from uh, rupturing prematurely. There's, it's on both ends. We have a pressure gauge that we borrowed from Doc and a screw in there to prevent the ball from going to the back. Okay, so the procedure so the procedure was the duct tape, the back, mylar, which was the emergency blanket was made out of mylar, which is what the guy used in the presentation from SLU. SLU. And so we, our seal wasn't the best because we used duct tape instead of the caps that he used. So there was error because of that. And we stuck the hockey, after we duct taped the back end, we stuck the hockey ball in the top and it rolled down to the screw. And then we did this, we created a seal on the other end and then set it at the proper angle. We calculated the angle before using trigonometry. And we put it at 60 degrees or 1.06 oh, meters off the ground. And then uh, we turned on the uh, vacuum pump and decreased, the, and decreased the pressure inside the cannon to a certain point and it poked a hole in the bottom end. And then after the ball shot through the top and landed, we measured how far it went with the measuring tape, which was in inches, and so we had to convert stuff. Ew. And it our gauge nice. was really bad. It was in... Uh, well, it wasn't bad. It was it confusing was because it was in pounds per square, square inch. And so we had to convert that to metric. Newtons per meter squared. Conversions took us a while. This was our background. It's hard to see, but this is the trigonometry. So we have the 60 degrees. We basically found how far away the back, the bottom of the cannon had to be from the top edge of the top of the cannon, and how high the cannon had, the bottom of the cannon had to be off the ground. We just did a trig there, and then the pressure was we had inches and in that. So we changed, or we had pounds, we changed it to kilograms, which is, we did that, and then we had to change the bottom into centimeters, and since it was inches squared, we had to divide by centimeters two times, and then in order to get meters, we had to divide by meters two times. And then in order to get the newtons in there, we had to multiply by baby G. 9.81. And then for 
we the gate pressure we got was gauge pressure, so we had to find actual pressure by adding uh, atmospheric, and also because that was because when we poked the hole on the bottom, air from outside was rushing in, so that's also why we had to add it. The force pushing the ball should have been atmospheric pressure, ideally, but because we couldn't get a perfect vacuum, it's not really atmospheric pressure, it's atmospheric pressure minus the pressure that's remaining in the tube before we shot it off. And I can't really read this, but there's lots of other calculations. We used work to find the velocity of the ball, and to calculate work, we did where is it? force force times distance times the cosine of the angle between. We should have used the integral, but don't know integrals that well. And so to find the work on the ball, we had to find the total work and then multiply it by a ratio of the cross-sectional areas, since the ball wasn't perfectly fitting in the tube. There was a difference in the cross-sectional areas of about 12%, and that caused a lot of error, as you'll see. And then, for in order to find velocity, velocity and k amount of, we took the work. We had had velocity, we had work is equal to 1 half mv squared. We rearrange it for v. And that velocity is v initial, then we used uh, at the begin, velocity final is equal to velocity initial and just in the opposite direction. So, in order to get that, because we used the equation, we had, didn't record the time, so that was our fault. We used, didn't record the time because we had no means of doing that while taking the video and doing all that. And we tried, we tried to do it, but we couldn't. So. That skewed, that skewed our final distance anyways. It was V final, in order to find time, we arranged V final in the Y direction equals V initial in Y direction baby G, plus baby G times T for time. And then in order to find delta X, we just use the delta X equals V initial X direction T plus one half A T squared. This is a picture of our data table. <laughs> So this was the pressure reading we had, and then this is the distance in feet and meters we had. Uh, this is another picture of our data. This is the actual data table that we did the calculations on. Yeah. And it's basically every single value with the math I explained earlier. The math is below. Yeah, that's sample yeah. calculations. And then there's our sample calculations. And then this is our graph. So as you can see, our data is very different. And I, we blame that on the ball not being perfect, <coughs> having the liquid in it to prevent it from bouncing. So we got a line, we put a linear fit on it and got a slope of 9.86. And we use that as our experimental value. And our accepted value was um, almost a factor of 10,000 times greater. So <laughs> we had enormous error. This was our math analysis. So basically, it was, the graph was a force versus distance. And so this slope was going to be work just because of the integral caused it to be force over, it's force derivative of distance. Yeah, and then it'd be, uh, the derivative of x to the 1 would be x to the negative 1. Anyways, sources of error. Sources of error, as I said earlier, the difference in the cross-sectional areas. And we used duct tape as a seal. Duct tape's not the best for sealing things when you're trying to take pressure out of them. And the ball, it has fluid inside of it with pellets to prevent it from bouncing. We didn't know that when we bought it. So we did error on 
work on the ball. And that's where we got, and this is where we got the almost 10,000 factor of error, 10,000. Just because that was four digit nets in the thousands. It's insane. And then we also did uh, error on the ball, or error on the distance measure. This was the one we measured in meters, but these values, since our time was different and other, well, yeah, the time was bad, and so we decided that this, if there was no error in the system, or that giant amount of error was gone, it would have gone this far if there was no, if that error was gone. So basically the one that went the, far, the farthest was 15.24 meters. If there was no error, it would have gone over 8,000 meters. At a very high velocity, I think it was 300, 300 meters something. per second. Our conclusion was that there is a relationship between pressure and the distance that it travels. We just couldn't figure out exactly what it was based on our data. It's not inverse, but it's not direct either. It's kind of, the more pressure it is, the farther it goes, but it's not connected directly. I don't know if that makes sense. Basically, in our experiment, we didn't look for the direct relationship, but what we what we did was we used equations to find it instead of finding a direct one like so. If we would have graphed those two, we would have found we would have had to use an equation and we found. But we in our experiment we didn't look for that equation, we used a whole series of equations to find a link. And the error for work and on the ball and delta x was ninety nine percent extremely large a factor of 10,000 and we have videos okay so we, this is our we are over time so we have to actually stop right now okay. thank you guys so r and lab we made a cannon and we used this ball a Franklin AGS Pro it's a street hockey ball it caused us a large error because there's a liquid inside as you can feel, <laughs> it's, there's pellets floating around in the liquid to keep it from bouncing, and that ball has is meant to be played with at a certain temperature. I don't remember what. The different colors mean different temperatures. So the purpose of our experiment was to affect it how far the projectile tra the object travels as it shoots out the cannon. For our objects, we were originally doing potatoes and oranges, but the potatoes and oranges were too massive. And we tried a tennis ball, but that was not massive enough. And, and we did use that in order to see if the pressure we sucked out of it and it ended up, the pressure we sucked out of it and then added with the uh, atmospheric pressure when we poked the hole in the bottom because air rushing in. If that combined pressure make a air pressure can basically where we sucked out all the pressure inside of it and so when we poke a hole in the bottom it shoots out of the top and we 